So the, the next and um, last speaker of this session is Xu uh, Zhang from um, uh, Bristol, um, Bristol University, um, the M MRC Integrative Epidemiology Unit. Um, it's this nice uh, way to end, and it kind of shows that you know, computer science's scope is large scale data, it's not just genomes, you know, we've gone on to epigenomes, metagenomes, and we're ending with the phenome, you know, phenomics now. So, I'll let you take it away. Thank you. Um, uh, and well known normally uh, in China, uh, if the last talk is always the best talk. So that's my hope. Uh, um, so we, uh, so today I'm going to talk about um, um, about uh, the phenome. So uh, this is uh, a part of a big uh, universe. Uh, so uh, today's major actor is phenome SPD, so which is a method to uh, estimate the phenotypic correlation and doing multiple testing using GWAS summary results. So can we go to the next one? So uh, how about let's start from uh, uh, our national strategy, uh, one bear, one road. So when I look at this map, so it's a little bit shame because the endpoint is in the Netherlands, which is a slightly far away from the city I live, Bristol, which is very nice. So as a Chinese, I'm thinking like, oh, it's part of my responsibility to build this uh, last mile link between our national strategy and uh, what I'm doing. So then, um, so then I get this warmly invitation from Giga Science and uh, BGI. So I just randomly uh, submit my paper to a bio archive. And the next day, I, I receive a warm email from uh, Giga Science inviting me to uh, submit my paper to uh, this famous journal and uh, asked me to uh, include in my competition. Then how can I say no to that? So after, two, uh, after set, uh, seven months, I'm uh, no, sorry, three months, then I also received uh, a, a, a warmly invitation to come to uh, the National Gene Bank in, in uh, Shenzhen. So I'm very, very impressive. Like uh, China now have this uh, flagship national bank, right? Uh, which made me feel very, very proud about being like a Chinese. So, uh, can we move to the next slide? Um, so, for the, phenol, uh, for the scientific uh, part of phenol SPD, so the story come from, uh, starts from a phenol wide association study. So, as you can see, uh, it's quite commonplace nowadays. So, there are a few uh, papers which I want to highlight. One of my friends, Philip Paycock just recently published uh, a very nice paper in JAMA on Oncology, uh, which he tests the uh, causal relationship between TMS and a lot of different diseases. So um, the key message here is a lot of TMS can increase several uh, risk of several cancers, but may reduce your cardiovascular. So it's like a trade-off. It's not saying, oh, if you look at one-on-one -on -one relationship, then you cannot find this. Um, so this flagship paper then lead to um, the development of a database of harmonizing GWAS summary data in our unit. Um, so uh, in general, we have two sets of data. Uh, the GWAS summary data for the topics, which normally you can find in GWAS catalog or uh, a lot of meta metabolism, met met methyl uh, methylation data, proteomic data. Um, so those are all the G1 significant hits for those results. Uh, we also collect a lot of G1 summary results with the full uh, uh, with the full results across the whole genome. Um, so which we have about a thousand of them, which so far is the largest uh, database around the world. Um, so with this centralized database, then we can start building up a uh, universe of GWAS analysis software. So uh, Fino SPD is our third child, and our first and second child, LEHA, MR base, is out there, so which is uh, hopefully quite famous in the genetic <coughs> genealogy field. 
So, um, although this uh, LD Hub MR base is highly linked to Fino SPD, so uh, please allow me to uh, briefly introduce these two methods to you. Um, so, LD Hub is for LD score regression. As you guys may know, uh, it's uh, developed by Broad Institute, uh, a very famous guy called by Neil. And uh, so, it's used to your summary results to tell you how much your trait or your disease is heritable, as well as what is the genetic correlation between two of your traits. So, um, so the idea is very simple. So it's kind of saying, oh, so I have a lot of friends, then the, uh, the ability, so uh, this is so far called a uh, linkage distribution in, uh, uh, in human genetics. And uh, so if you have more elderly friends, then you have more probability to tag in a causal variant. Then your effect size is in general larger. So then why not just we correlate it the LD score with the effect size here is the chi square statistics. So the idea is very simple but very successful. Um, got about 700 citations in two years already. So can we go to the next slide? So we have this super engine, but we still need a, a driving system to make the car running fast. So LD Hub is such a driving system. So um, can we go to the next slide? Um, so in the LD Hub, we have a database of 223 uh, human, uh, human traits as well as uh, on fly LD score regression analysis pipeline. Uh, we have looked up center to, uh, uh, to look up any existing uh, heritability or uh, uh, genetic correlation between any traits. Uh, we also have a GWAS summary share data center which share all the GWAS summary results with the community. So uh, the second uh, database is called Emma Base, which is for Mendelian randomization. Uh, as you guys may know, Mendelian randomization is using uh, the SNPs, so genetic variants, to uh, instrument uh, the uh, causal effect of a trait on another trait. The trait one is normally a risk factor, like a smoking or physical activity, and trait two is normally a disease, for example, like any cancers. So uh, for some more information about the background about Mendelian randomization, uh, I list some of the uh, literatures here, especially this uh, nice uh, review paper in uh, Nature Review Cardiology, which is published by uh, Michael Honus. Um, um, so a specific type of uh, Mendelian randomization is called two sample Mendelian randomization. I think it's very simple. The uh, it, the data from uh, for the exposure and the outcome are from two samples. So uh, as you can see, uh, there are four major steps. The first step we find all the gene genetic association before the exposure from one GWAS. And then we look up those topics in the outcome genomes, and then we harmonize the effect. Then at the end, sorry, um, then at the end uh, is most most exciting the uh, uh, part. So we uh, regress the effect of the exposure on the effect of the outcome. So the slope is actually the causal effect of the exposure on the outcome. So. Um, so we also have built a web interface as well as an R package to uh, speed up and make it more robust. So um, for example, yesterday night after a nice, uh, nice uh, drinking uh, and uh, live band, so I go home and then run some analysis and uh, suddenly like uh, 10,000 uh, MR analysis was finished last night. So we also provide, in MRBase, uh, we also provide uh, 10 different uh, MR methods, sensitivity analysis. Uh, we even uh, create the reference list to you with a, very, uh, with a lot of nice plots. So you can imagine, if you want to do some linear randomization analysis, it goes to MRBase, it almost do everything for you. 
you only need to write the introduction and a conclusion before you submit your paper. That's our dream. Um, so uh, as we can see in uh, MRAs, we have about 2,000 different GWASs, 12 uh, different maintainer and maintenance methods. We have a package and a snap lookup. So this is very useful. So if you have snap, you want to look up what's its function across 2,000 different GWASs, then you can, you can go to our website and do the snap lookup. So um, go back to our main actor, Pinot SPD. Uh, so why do we need it? So as we can see, uh, a paper uh, published by Peter Woods uh, in, uh, four years ago, uh, they show that molecular phenotypes such as metabolites are highly correlated to each other. Then if you want to do a phenol-wide association analysis, multiple testing is a headache problem. Because if you do a uh, bonferroni correction, then that's definitely overkill. Um, so when individual level phenotype data, so which means you have the phenotype data, then it's very simple because you just need to correlate all the phenotypes together, and then you can simply collect for the uh, correlations between the phenotypes. But the reality, reality is we only have the GWAS summary results from MRBase LD Hub. So we need a magic hand to correct for multiple testing. Um, so, as we can see, the scope of phenol SPD is actually very, very simple. So we have three steps. We first, we harmonize the G1 summary results into the same format, which have already achieved by MRBase LD Hub. Then, in the second step, we estimate the phenotypic correlation matrix using two existing methods, either meta-CCA or LD score regression. I will introduce more uh, in the next slide. And the third step is called SPD, which is not a Shenzhen Development Bank, but instead it's a, a way to estimate the number of tests using any uh, correlation matrix. Um, so for meta CCA, it's very simple. Um, so basically, if you have a set of SNPs and a set of phenotypes, you want to get a universe. Uh, uh, as the uh, association estimate, then you can apply meta CCA. As a side product, as we can see, uh, it also uh, provides a way to estimate phenotypic correlation matrix, which, uh, which they call sigma YY. Um, then uh, it's very simple, so it's, uh, e it's equal to the Pearson correlations between the betas of the first GWAS and the beta of the second GWAS. And the assumption is both traits are from the same samples. So that although the G, we only have GWAS summary results, but these two GWAS are from the same sample. Can we go to the next slide? Um, so as we introduced, LD score regression is a quite famous method. Um, but it also provides a way to estimate the phenotypic correlation. As we can see, uh, uh, as I introduced, the slope is the genetic correlation between two traits. And the intercept here is actually the phenotypic correlation after as the after uh, just for um, sample overlap automatically. So another good thing for this is the genetic and the phenotypic correlation measures are pre-calculated and you can look up those uh, estimates in LD Hub now. Um, so then for, uh, then for the SPD part, um, so uh, it's a very famous method uh, developed by Niholt in 2004. Uh, it's first developed to collect for multiple testing um, in uh, between SNPs. Then since such a method can be used to any correlation matrix, then why not we apply it to phenotypic correlation matrix as well? So that's our basic idea. Um, so to prove our method, phenol SPD is working. So we do some simulation. So basically we uh, sample two uh, different samples, A and B, and we uh, simulate the genotype data and two different phenotype data. And as we can see, they have uh, a certain level of sample overlap between these two. Um, 
So this is uh, the result of the simulation, which is quite complex, but the key message here is the sample overlap, the, uh, the level of sample overlap affects the accuracy of the phenotypic correlation matrix massively. So that's something we need to control. We need to control. Um, so can we go to the next slide? Then we use some uh, real data. So as you guys may know, uh, Xin ETL published uh, uh, G was of uh, 452 metabolites in 2014, and they provide the observed phenotypic correlation matrix. Uh, so that's what uh, this can be used as a test data set. So we compare the observed phenotypic correlation with the phenotypic correlation estimate using uh, Vino SPD. So as we can see, the agreement is very good, uh, which is happy days. Then uh, we, we find a slightly, uh, uh, some, some slight outliers which have the phenotypic uh, uh, correlations but not show up in uh, uh, phenol SPD. We look into that because those samples are measured in very, very small samples, only 3,000 of them. Then the uh, sample overlap is also limited. That is why the accuracy, uh, the, uh, accuracy become very low. Um, so this is phenol SPD nowadays, and um, how about its future? So uh, you can see phenol SPD is particularly useful for uh, multiple GWAS from the same samples. For example, uh, if you have uh, complex molecular traits such as metabolites or cytokines, then uh, it's definitely very useful for you to do the multiple te uh, testing correction. Uh, but it can also be applied to databases like MLBase, LE Hub, which can split, which we can split traits into groups. For example, as you may know, there's a, a famous consulting called the Giant, which they measure the, your body mass index, height, those kind of things, which are all highly correlated. Then. Uh, since they are measured in the same sample, so we can apply phenol and SPD to each, uh, each sample of them. So here is the result. Um, so about eight, uh, in uh, MR base, about 862 traits we selected. Uh, phenol and SPD reduced the number of tests by one third. And in LD Hub, it's also doing a similar thing. So it's reduced the number of tests from 2000 uh, 221 to 134, so which massively reduce uh, the multiple testing problem. Then uh, another uh, great potential is uh, there's a lot of large scale GWAS uh, biobank coming out recently. For example, uh, the UK biobank, uh, China, uh, China Kaduri biobank, and Hong study. Uh, so they all measured a lot of samples, like a half million samples, and measured it, the genotype of each single of them, and measured uh, about a thousand, uh, 10,000 different phenotypes on them as well. So which, as you can see, is a very valuable uh, database. So, so for example, recently, from the news group, um, they released the GWAS summary results of the European samples from UK Biobank and uh, make it publicly available for about 2,400 human traits, so which is a massive uh, database and uh, very unique resources. So from those 2,400 human traits, we then further test and find that 600 of them are heritable. So, which are uh, believed to be the most valuable traits. Um, so, uh, it's quite happy to share with you guys that Phenol SPD got its very first citation uh, recently. Um, so, uh, we applied a hypothesis frame and DNA randomization to DNA methylation across the whole genome on 139 human traits. The reason why we select these 139 traits is because we believe they are all unique traits. And when we apply the to them, actually it's reduced the number of tests by half. So which means even, even though those 139 
Uh, diseases we believe they are not the same, but the correlation is still half. So let's prove the value of phenol SPD a lot. And this paper was now on a bio archive as well. Um, so if you're interested in DNA methylation, then please visit that. Um, uh, so last page is, um, so I provided some links of phenol SPD. For example, the paper is now on bio archive, but hopefully it will be published in data science very soon. Um, the script is on GitHub. Uh, I also provide the link of GitHub and MRBS here in case you are interested in that. Um, so for the last slide, I would like to uh, give a big thanks of the amazing team. So my major supervisor, Tom Gaunt, and uh, for the LDHub team, some famous guy from the population genetics field, Dave Evans and Benio. Uh, and also, uh, I want to send my the warm, warm word from my our big George George Davis Smith from Bristol. So he's uh, our director of our center. And when I tell him this story, he said, "Oh, uh, this is uh, very exciting." So he wants to send his credit card bill to you guys as well. 